please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Richard Hanley. I served the United States Air Force, 1952 until 1956. In 1958, I joined the New York City Police Department Service and the Police Commissioner's Special Crime Task Force. Until 1961, then I transferred to New York City Fire Department. Until September 1984, as a captain at the Harlem Hilton Firehouse, 143rd Street in Manhattan. My last eight years as a captain came to an abrupt halt when I was disabled in an accident on duty. I am here today to expose corruption and injustice done in the guise of subverted justice. This corruption couldn't exist without the collusion of judges, lawyers, and clerks. Like all Americans, I believed in a judicial system, but never thought that I would be a victim of such flagrant injustice and corruption. September 11, 2001 was a tragic day for America, and as a former firefighter in New York City, I trained and worked with many of the 343 firefighters that were killed. The day before mediation, one week after 9-11, I contacted my attorney, Douglas Nella, and told him I couldn't go to mediation the next day because of the trauma and depression caused on 9-11-01 a week ago. I also told attorney Nella I was being treated at the Veterans Hospital with Ambien to help me sleep and Valium three times a day to cope with the anxiety of 311. Attorney Nella told me he already met with my ex-wife and her attorney privately, attorney and her attorney Ross, and resolved the property and alimony issues. Attorney Nella gave me a folder of the final judgment of dissolution of marriage with Judge Foxman's name on the, on the court papers. The only thing missing was the date. In the folder, my ex-wife was given our 4,000 square foot house in New York, our Bahamian Club condominium in New Smyrna Beach, 10 vacant building lots in Florida Shores, one of the two repair shops purchased by my parents, and one third of the money left to me by my mother when she passed away uh, one and a half years after my ex-wife filed for divorce. I was given my parents' house in Vermont that they built in 1973, which was not a marital uh, asset. One of the two stations that my parents purchased was also given to my wife. The only marital property that I received was a gas station in Danbury, Connecticut. The condo I was living in was purchased by my parents' money before my mother passed away and was also given to me as my sole property, just as all property given to my ex-wife was listed as a sole property free and clear. An illegal clause, which was put into the papers, had asked me, uh, my attorney asked me to initial, and it stated my former wife may have an interest in my home, and I couldn't sell it, mortgage it, or take, it, take out an equity loan in case I needed financial help. It was to be security for my ex-wife's alimony. This was in violation of Florida law, which all properties should be free, given free and clear. The day after Attorney Nella gave me the dissolution folder, we went to mediation. The mediator, Attorney Gordon, came in and said Attorney Ross wanted $3,000 monthly for my ex-wife and $932 a month for me. I asked my attorney Nella what to do and he wouldn't speak to me and turned away. I told Attorney Gordon I couldn't do it. I said 26 years of New York City service and being married only 17 of the 26 years, I knew it wasn't fair. Attorney Gordon came back in and said Attorney Ross wanted $2,800 monthly for my ex-wife and $1,132 monthly for me or we would be tied up in court litigation. Again, I asked my attorney Nella what to do and he turned away from me. Attorney Nella represented me for over three years and knew I had appointments uh, in New York with the federal doctors to help me cope and myself and other firefighters and police officers to cope with the uh, problem of 9-11. Uh, and also after the doctors in New York, I was being treated at the Veterans Hospital and I was then sent to a trauma center for rehab in Massachusetts with other firefighters and policemen. I gave in and said I just wanted to go home, but I had to come back after lunch to sign the papers I initialed. The total mediation took probably 30 minutes. Attorney Gordon returned a third time and said Attorney Ross wanted $15,000 for himself. 
And that is the only time Attorney Nello said anything to me. He said to give Ross $7,500, which I agreed to, and left until after lunch. To this date, the legal bills between my ex-wife and myself are around $200,000. Leaving mediation, I asked Attorney Nello why I wasn't given the property and money. He, he showed me an original financial graph two years ago. The graph was made up by Attorney Nello and his CPA after one year of going over tax returns and canceled checks. Why wasn't marital property divided 50-50 as directed by Florida law? And inherited money and anything derived from it is, should be given to me according to Florida law. His response was, I couldn't believe it, was to sue him for malpractice and he walked away. Judge Green twice heard arguments to give me my home free and clear, but left it in my ex-wife's name as her life estate, allowing her to come into my home whenever she wanted to. The Judicial Qualifi Qualifications Commission's found Judge Graham in gross error. The Senate Oversight Committee agreed with the Judicial Qualifications Commission, but could not impeach Judge Graham because they could not prove corruption. Attorney Ross, Judge Graham, and Judge Brees were given the following papers to guarantee the alimony. Governor Patterson sent me a copy of the New York State Constitution with his stationery that stated that the alimony and pension are guaranteed by the New York State Pension Bureau. Commissioner Connolly, New York City Commissioner, sent a letter and spoke with the Attorney Ross. After sending the letter, Attorney Ross called him up and he also stated that the city would pay the alimony directly to my ex-wife if I defaulted. The Honorable Peter Vallone, President of for 13 years of the New York City Council said the city was responsible for the alimony if I defaulted. Honorable Peter Vallone is also a member of the New York State Bar Association for over 50 years, also practices before the United States Supreme Court, and his three sons are attorneys, and one of the uh, sons is now on New York City Council also. Since my divorce, my ex-wife received $375,000 in alimony, and I received $126,000. She still has all the property I gave her at mediation. Right now, the stocks that I gave her, that I inherited from my mother, are worth over between two and a half and three million dollars. And I still pay alimony. And she has all the property that we had, all these marital assets. Judge Brees had all the information presented above given to him, but he left, let Judge Graham's ruling stand. Attorney Ross, and Judge Brees socialized outside the court, and their daughters went to college together. I think that Judge Brees should excuse himself from any case with Attorney Ross. Attorney Ross also made his statements and lies in court. One of the statements is that my wife had a tape, and there's no such tape that exists. He said, I threatened my wife that I was going to destroy or ruin her. Under oath, I wanted to go on stand. I disrupted the court because I wanted to disprove these things. My attorney would let me not go take under oath, and the judge ignored it. He also said that I threatened him. And my brother-in-law was a good friend of mine. After the divorce, for several years, we socialized together. And Attorney Ross asked him for a letter stating that I threatened his sister, which he gave to Attorney Ross. All these were lies, just like everything that goes on in this courthouse, between the judges, the lawyers, and the clerks. Taking my condo as security for alimony is illegal. It is even against the Constitution when a judge can seize property without just cause. Any judge or lawyer will tell you the court did not have subject matter jurisdiction to grant the life estate that was not granted to my ex-wife in a divorce. I hope someone with a sense of justice, morals, ethics, and conscience will contact me or we'll contact rather Pam Bondi, the Attorney General of United, of Tallahassee, up in Tallahassee. A whistleblower from this court can bring justice. I hope someone in the court will do this. We need someone with a sense of morals, ethics, and justice. Now, I have documents here of forgeries from the uh, courthouse. One document here stated I was represented in front of Judge Graham by Attorney Nella. Now, Attorney Nella never appeared at this attorney. The paper that the court had, the court clerk, someone changed it with whiteout, 
saying I was not represented and put Attorney Nello's name on the paper. I also have the letters here from the government, Dr. Usadi, who was treating me for uh, depression and uh, the trauma affected on 9-11. And she stated there was no way I could possibly have gone to court for mediation, the condition I was in and the medication I was taking. I was incapable of taking care of myself or defending myself. But again, they ignored all these papers from the government and from